Hey guys, it's Punchy, and today I'm going to be discussing Deep Oakland's Charisma stat and how to unbreak it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in guides like these, and comment a suggestion on what video I should work on next. Thanks! Starting off, Charisma is one of the stats available at the beginning stages of the game. If you want to have an easier time leveling Charisma as a freshie, put the majority of your stats in Charisma to get a book on spawn. If you look in the game's stat menu, it says that Charisma is your ability to influence others with your personality, and what it increases is your ether. To level up Charisma is one of the more unique parts of this game, which requires you to recite one of the phrases to an NPC or player in order to to get a response. Using the in-game text chat is a pretty cool feature I would like to see more of in Deep Oaken as well as other games. There are many things that you could do with chat that could change how the game plays and how the game reacts to a player's response. Anyway, by leveling up your charisma, you'll get access to many interesting mantras and talents as well as some free goodies in certain situations. One instance where charisma can come in handy is in Lance Leshy's shop in Etrus where you can speak to a flame charm NPC for a free talent. Usually you would not be able to get this talent for free unless you had flame charm, but because your charisma is so high you can talk to him and get a free snack. There are several interactions that allow you to finesse the game like this including the random hobos sitting around in Arisa and some secret interactions I'll save for a later video. Anyway, if you want some handouts from everybody everywhere, then maybe Charisma is the path for you. Some talents that Charisma provides are generally good on any build in the game and are nice for well-rounded builds that just want to deal more damage as well as take reduced damage. One of the main status effects that Charisma talents apply to others around the player is called Charm. When enemies are charmed, there are talents that dictate if they'll take more damage and even deal reduced damage to yourself. If you want to be a team player, by charming your teammates, they can also recover faster from knocks as well. Some ways you can apply charm can be putting enemies in combat, hitting them with mantras, getting to low health, and even being hit by enemies that share your race. If you want to get fancy and be like me, I got some enchanted lemon pepper steppas with a lure that increase the chances of my charm proc when I take damage from an enemy. I believe the effectiveness of the damage reduction from charm scales off the charisma stat. Some other good charisma talents that are overall solid if you play with friends could be through the empath tree. As an empath, you're able to use your very rare and empathic abilities to notice that your friends are indeed your friends, allowing them to take less damage from yourself and deal less damage to you. In all seriousness, this is a good talent to pick up because you'll be hitting your teammates a lot if they're kinda sped, and this definitely helps me a lot. The other uses of charisma are related to stealing from the NPCs. By having high charisma, you can get some of these talents to let you sell pretty much anything at insane prices, which can allow you to collect a bag every time you sell your loot. I would recommend anybody to have an alternative account with these charisma talents to make as much notes as they can by selling their loot. Charisma also has the option of vows, which are used to control other people that agree to make a vow with you, and you can have several actions that you can make your partners take. The basic commands that you can make your minions do are fight, which boosts their damage, run, which boosts their speed, and sleep, which pretty much slumps them out. You can grip them, you can pretty much do whatever. Other ones that are rare are the abilities to make them return to you from a certain range and to heal them to full. Perhaps I'm missing out on some of them, but my focus is on the broad topic of charisma and not the vow of mastery in specific. When talking about charisma, it's almost impossible to not mention the reputation-based talents. Most of them are lackluster, like guards will let you hit them more times and reputation caps out higher, but one stands out. The name of this talent is Bodyguard Detail, and let's just say it's a summoning jutsu. When anybody does enough damage to you while you're in an allied town, any guards that are nearby will begin to swarm them. Even things like the Royal Etrus guards with their ninja gear and the hive mechs will come out of hiding to kill your enemy. Bodyguard Detail is very fun and chaotic, and it serves its purpose well in keeping you safe in the so-called safe zones. One legendary talent I picked up was one that gave me a buff as well as those around me and I think it's a pretty cool application of the in-game text chat. Now you can act like Captain Orwin and buff your homies with a motivational speech. The charisma mantras are quite basic and serve the purpose of applying status. Sing is the one that applies charm to those around you and it's pretty much useless besides that one attribute. If you have the talent that applies charm in any mantra hit, why use this at all? Taunt is the same thing as Sing, but it prevents those hit from jumping as well as giving them a damage buff against you. Taunt is super good at messing up people's playstyles as well as running away from them in combat. The damage buff it gives them is almost negligible if they become charmed. I usually use this instead of Sing at all times. Previously, these AoE buffs were decent due to the proc effects on gems, such as Wayward and Wind, but unfortunately deep gems don't work in them if you use Sing or Taunt. Now that Charisma has been covered, let's talk about how to unbind it. For this unbind you will need 75 Charisma and don't mess up y'all because there are no second chances with this one. So we'll be heading over to Etrus and talking to a certain NPC. For real, some of you guys need to behave, she's just a nice girl. Okay, I don't know which developer did this, but they're pushing it. Anyway, Carlia, this NPC, tells us she's an aspiring diver due to her entire hood being killed by mudskippers. You must agree to help her out in the Aresia Mines to continue the quest. Once you show up to Aresia, take a left and climb up to see Carlia getting attacked by a mudskipper. To actually view this animation of her getting attacked, you must either hop servers or rejoin because the game needs to reload her position. So, once interacting with her and scaring off the mudskipper, you will have three options. Option 1 will result her going down to the mines and dying in a creepy way. She does not return, and even the people she knew back at Etrus are oblivious of her disappearance. This event is quite graphic for Roblox, and to be honest, it's kind of sad. Like, it, it's just a sad event that happens, and it definitely builds the world. Option 2 requires some charisma, but this is not the one we want to pick. She claims that having some time to relax and reflect will help her, but 
That woman's lying. Back in Natchez, we can see her cradling the head of a man covered in blood. He acts as if he's her father figure, but the trauma got to her and resulted in her going psycho and killing him. I knew right off the bat that this girl was bad news. She's like a Twitter chick, easily influenced. At this point, you can either kill her or let her live. So if you've done this, you already know what your decision is and I'll let you decide what's the right thing to do. The third option is the correct one and you tell her to rethink her life, which she does. Once you make it back to Etrus and rejoin the server, Carlita will become your basic trad wife. She's a little bit too happy about being safe, but hey, if I get to unbind my charisma, I'm all for it. As you can see, your hard work and simping has paid off in the form of a card. I have my complaints of the addition of a love interest, Obviously, this is a love interest NPC because this is not a normally written NPC. I'm unsure of the dev's intentions, but this kind of doesn't fit in the theme of the game. Overall, for the sake of charisma, I don't mind. Hopefully, this will leave you guys with some insight on how to play with charisma and if this stat is worth it for your playstyle. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you enjoyed it, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.